VK3601, the subject of this video, how to build and convert it into the one driving chassis called the VK Sport. All the resin parts I show you to convert this thing are constructed by myself. There's a lot of 3D printing involved in this project, so let's get into it. My name is Kai and you are watching Tank Brusher German AFVs on a weekly basis. Welcome everybody. This is the Revosys Vollketten Versuchskraftfahrzeug 3601, the VK3601. That's a Tiger Tank prototype with full interior and this box is full of really intimidating plastic with great details. But to be completely honest, we don't have the time for a lengthy unboxing on this one. I would like to build this vehicle in context of what wars in history and build it to an accurate way, convert it to the VK Sport. Historically speaking, this one is a Tiger Tank prototype, sitting it between the VK3001 and the Tiger 1 V1. This vehicle itself is not really relevant, it did lead nowhere, but the automotive parts were carried over into the Tiger Tank, so it's the first time we see an initial Tiger drive sprocket, for example. The hull itself is like the rest of the molding, very crisp and nicely detailed. And the build process starts with the assembly of the running gear, of course. The road wheels are interleaving, but only two sections. I glued them together using green stuff like I did earlier on the Panther, for example, just to get a little bit in head start on the painting process later on. Overall part correction was, I think this was the only part I had to adjust to fit, but that was according to the manual. Let's talk about the first option. These are the side windows. You get the number seven and the number two. The number two is the one you would use if you build the tank. My project, it's the first part I have to construct. That's very simple. The driver side is just a metal plate and the radio operator side had the vision slit welded over or covered up with a sheet metal. For the overall building experience, the fit is quite perfect. I had not a single instance where I had to adjust or sand a part that was not specified in the manual or in the correction sheet just to get it into place. This escape hatch, for example, is workable and yeah, the, all the parts fit together nicely. And once mounted, the whole thing remains workable. This escape hatch is quite something special, I think. It was only present on the VK3601 and the Porsche Tiger Tank, the VK4501, but it didn't carry over into the Tiger Tank itself. Let's progress with the build looking at the photo edge sheet. We get a really nice sheet of photo edge here, a lot of parts to detail the interior and a not so hidden challenge. That's obviously one of the most complex parts I tried to assemble so far. It goes together well. The only thing that changed on my side was having a little bit more practice from my previous builds and yeah, it works, it goes together. I take in general now more care in the construction phase of the build, so this was not a real challenge. But of course it is a real multimedia kit. You have to assemble photo edge and place plastic on photo edge and photo edge on plastic again. So it could be challenging if this is your first contact with photo edge. Just to get an understanding for each other, this complete interior of this vehicle is pure speculation. We have no photographic evidence of how this vehicle was equipped. What Rivosis did here was combining some Panzer 3, Panzer 4, pictures, panda, whatever, and made a believable interior kit. It's not complete, it misses a little bit, a few parts, but I do not care about it. I want to have only what was present when the whole thing was demonstrated. So there was a little bit filling going on, mounting the resin parts, as well as painting it in its base colors. The next part I had to construct was just the floor where the turret basket would sit. We see people standing on there. So I measured the existing pattern with my microscope and printed a new one. Elfenbein and Hellgrau as interior colors as usual and I checked out a new primer that worked well 
too. I kept the painting of the interior components really simple here. Just a base color followed by a initial wash and that will be subject to the next episode doing it in a better detail or pimping it up from where it is now. For the leather seats I like to start with a very bright color and use Vallejo ink, game ink, to get a little bit a shine or something a little bit used out of it. The whole thing is then put together. I just went for driving it. It sits all snugly. The dashboard and the radio rack painted in the interior color. The motor or trans <laughs> sorry transmission block painted in the floor color. But now let's talk about some of the parts on the rear of the vehicle just so we can get around. We have two options for the rear plate and the exhaust and that one is the one that is shown on the photographs. I put the information down below. Next choice are radiators or just air intakes. The mesh is quite large enough to see the radiator, so both are valid choices in my opinion. I personally don't know. And when assembling the rear plate of the vehicle, we have to drill out some holes. And advice when using a cheap Chinese drill bit is not using it as a drill bit at all. It's really putting me off working with these junk tools. I have to sort this out, I'm sorry. Okay, we have another choice on the motor deck, how this rear section looks according to what exhaust we use. This is what goes with the exhaust I chose and it fits the original images. However, on this back plate there was nothing fitted to it. I put the information down below as I said and there you can see there will be nothing added. The radio equipment on the demonstration vehicle was not present and it is unlikely that it had looked the way Revosys did this. We know how it looks from the prototype Tiger tanks. So remove these studs as well. Let's swing it around to the front end and finish this one off. There is a connection rod between the left and the right fender. It is present on the B sprue but not in the manual. And this rod replaced the hooks that would usually allow you to open or close the front fender. And yeah, that's just a rod. It is included. The more challenging part is the front plate. That's a two-piece part with an inside and an outside as a separate part and it's not easy to reconstruct. I used the photographs as a guide and went from there. There was no ball mount and no Fahrerseeklappe installed on the original one, so I have to design two new parts, wedging a window glass in between. And this is what I did in the end. It was printed at 0.02 millimeter Z height on my Anycubic Photon S, so this time there are no visible set layer lines once the whole thing is painted and primed. Just would like to remind you if you want me to share my files freely for all, there are ways to support my channel by subscribing or direct donations via PayPal. Thank you. This is what the whole thing looks assembled then and painted in RAL721 dark gray and yet there is much more to build and modify. Let's flip the whole thing around and put the lid on. I would like to talk about the motor deck next, just finishing this part off. This is how it is supposed to look or can look. We get a few options here in the manual. These air vent covers, I think they look Panzer 3-ish, Stuckish, and they are not present on the vehicle while it was demonstrated and later on. Same Tiger tank rear, it does not look like a Stuck. Okay, <laughs> so I just assemble this here. On the front of the main deck there was the driver's hatch was never assembled, was never present. Not during demonstration, not during when the vehicle was at Maybach in Friedrichshafen. It was never present, so we can remove these parts. The ventilator has an <laughs> interior, so I would like to display it open. This was photographed on one of the demonstration photos, and yeah, I would like to have this. Last add-on to the front end for now is 
these or are these small spheres I printed. The hole did not turn out too well, so I have to drill it open just a little bit more. The whole purpose of these two bolts, they are placed on a rod in the front of the vehicle. So the driver, when he looks out through his very small driver's window, can see where the vehicle starts and ends and is not driving into <laughs> factory walls or something like this. You see the same feature on a Panda Ausführung D. So I placed a 3D printed block on the side of the fenders and glued this steel rod in there. I should have bought rod material. This wire material is not perfectly straight, but it will turn out. And that was present on the chest vehicle, but it's not included in the kit, so I added it. That's about the front end. The window glasses are still missing, as well as the tracks and 3D printing them will be subject to the next video finishing the build process. I would like to fix my schedule again going back to a weekly release so this is why this video is a little bit shorter even so it's a more complex build as well. See you guys next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Tankbrusher. Thanks for subscribing. Happy modeling 